sports are absolutely a positive all around. Um, the general consensus is that there's uh, many more positives than, than drawbacks here uh, to get athletes back engaged. Um, there's plenty of, of data and research that shows that those that play athletics um, do better in their school life, in their home life. Um, they succeed in future jobs um, and leadership roles. Uh, so we absolutely want to get our athletes um, back to play as fast as possible and as safe as possible as well. So as schools are reopening, hopefully for face-to-face -face, um, uh, learning as much as possible, we want to get the athletes back out there doing what they want to do for the benefits of both the physical and the mental health. So initially, um, especially with contact sports, there was a fear of um, transmission of COVID-19 among the contact sports. Um, obviously, the, the cornerstones of, um, of close contact, you can't really avoid that with a contact sport. That's, that's the purpose of the contact sport. So um, there was initially a fear and a concern, which is why a lot of these sports uh, were canceled or postponed until we learned more. Um, but fortunately, we have not seen um, a rapid spread among amongst contact sports. So with the rapid involvement of the pandemic and just learning more science um, day after day, we have fortunately found that the actual risk of uh, transmission in this sport in and of itself is lower than we initially thought. Um, and it's more likely the environment of the athletes, um, both on and off the court or the field, that makes the biggest difference. So the National Federation of High School Sports just put out a recent updated statement um, that has several specific points. One in, in that it's um, they're no longer doing a tiered system of risk um, based on type of sport. Um, but if we look at the general um, epidemiologic data, it shows that uh, contact sports are higher risk than than non-contact sports. Outdoor sports are lower risk than indoor sports. Indoor sports can be similar risk to outdoor if you use a mask, for example, with basketball or volleyball. Um, but again, the overall consensus is it's really the, um, the uh, infection rates mirror the local community um, prevalence of the virus. We just need to really stay on guard and continue with the um, social distancing, um, universal mask wearing, um, especially in social situations where you're not able to physically distance, hand washing, and staying home when you're sick. So we really need our parents, coaches, athletic trainers, um, and student athletes themselves to lead by example. So as we are coming down off this peak of a um, pretty high surge in the winter for COVID-19, um, I do think it's it's a good idea to get re-engaged in your athletic activity, whether it's just exercising outside, going for a run, or engaging in an organized team sport. Um, but just making sure that you follow all the safety protocols. Um, if your team is recommending masking on court, do it. Um, if you're able to um, physically distance and make sure that you're universally masked, asking when you're not um, actively engaged in the sport itself, that's going to be key to just stay vigilant um, and lead by example. So if you have tested positive for COVID-19, um, hopefully you have recovered and um, followed the CDC guidance of at least 10 days of um, isolation where you've stayed out of school and um, really stayed home and, and healed well. Um, at that point, uh, as long as your symptoms were very mild and or you weren't symptomatic at all, um, you should be able to begin a slow progressive return to play where you begin some light aerobic activity um, after at least seven to ten days of zero symptoms. Um, and uh, then you should be able to return to play pretty easily without any further recommendations for testing. However, if you had moderate symptoms where you had fever for greater than three or four days, you had chest pain, shortness of breath, pneumonia, or if unfortunately you were hospitalized for COVID-19, um, there are some uh, more uh, recommendations regarding return to play um, and potential cardiac and or other medical clearance that's recommended. So if that is the case, we do want you to see your primary care doctor um, who will go through your different symptoms and decide what testing might be necessary. So it's a gradual progressive return to play um, because this illness can, can take you by surprise and sometimes some people have longer lasting symptoms that it takes them just a while to get back to doing their activities of daily living, let alone exercise.